Now I want to talk about I want to talk about LC circuits. Okay, L stands for inductor, and uh, C stands for capacitor. And these are two examples of LC circuits. This, <clears throat> whatever the the value of this is in Henry's, and the value of this in Farad's, those two together, they will have a resonance. If I put a voltage across this circuit, it will establish a resonance, and this will oscillate or vibrate at that frequency. Now this right here is a filter of some kind, so I can actually determine the signal coming through and what gets out on the other side by this filtering. <clears throat> but in radio, we use inductors and capacitors to allow us to uh, or separate frequencies or oscillate to produce frequencies. Now I want to talk about filters. Now filters are taking signals that are already made and coming in and then changing them. I want to talk about filters. This is a low pass filter. Inductors will pass low frequencies, but block high frequencies. Capacitors will pass high frequencies, but block low frequencies. So if we have like an entire spectrum coming in here, then that signal will come through here and this is impeding or blocking the high frequency. If there's any high frequency left, this capacitor is shorting it to ground. And so all we have are low frequencies. They're attenuating off and we're losing our high frequencies. We take this circuit here, which is an opposite arrangement. The capacitor is passing high frequencies and blocking low frequencies. The inductor is shorting high frequencies to ground. And so what happens is we don't have any low frequencies, but we have our high frequencies. <clears throat> this is a combination circuit. This one is notching a certain frequency because this was passing high. Uh, this is blocking some low. Here we're blocking some, we're, we're shorting some high to ground and we're actually shorting some low to ground. And so we get this that has a pass, it's passing signals only in the middle. The opposite circuit here has, it's, what it is doing is it's passing high but blocking low, and again passing high but blocking low, and then we're shorting a certain frequency between this passing a high and this passing a low to make it where we get everything here, we're missing everything in here, and we've got everything there. How about that? I want to talk about Hertz, uh, Heinrich Rudolf Hertz. Now, he was one of the first ones to come up with a practical radio transmitter. And uh, he is like, if we say kilohertz, megahertz, the uh, name for the cycles per second or frequency of a radio frequency is named after him. Now, he was an interesting person. You know, he only lived to be about 39 years old and uh, had a pretty, pretty successful life up until then, but he died of an incurable disease and uh, didn't get to do all he wanted to do with his life. And uh, oh, he only lived to 36. He was born in 1857 and lived to 36. <clears throat> what he did was he made this first primitive transmitter. It has DC that is supplying a feed to this uh, key right here, like a, a key for a telegraph. And when that keys this coil, it's making an induced current, which is then transferred. This is a transformer, primary, secondary. This increases the voltage. This is a step up um, transformer. And that's making a higher voltage over here. And when that voltage, it comes across, it comes across this spark gap here, and it goes to these two antenna. It's not going to the ground, it's going to two antenna. But what he, just, what he found was if you take this ring of wire or metal, that when you were keying over here, you could hold this ring over here and sparks would jump between that point. And so he demonstrated early radio transmission by this method. This would spark over here, and then he'd hold this ring in space, and it would spark. And that was a very interesting way, but that was the first demonstration of practical power transmission or radio transmission, and that was done back in the 1890s by Hertz. 
Nikolai Tesla. Nikolai Tesla is someone everyone talks about a lot. They um, he invented so much and we owe so much to him for our modern technological world. This was his version of a spark gap transmitter. It's very similar, but what would happen is you'd induce a current, a DC current into this coil. It would cause a spark here. It would feed through two capacitors here and then through two more coils making a spark there and then this would go to ground and that would go to an antenna. But uh, that was his version. So they all had their own individual version of spark gap transmitters. He was involved in the war of the currents. He was in a big war with Edison over the difference between AC and DC. Um, Edison had a lot more power than he did, but Tesla's better designs won out in the end over all of that. I want to talk about the Warden Cliff Tower. Now this was known as the Tesla Tower. It was an early wireless telecommunications tower designed by Nikola Tesla, and it was intended for power transmission. Now this is a very interesting thing. You know that when uh, Tesla first came out, he wanted to be able to take and send electric power directly to the receiver. Like if you're on land and you want to run a ship at sea, you can transmit that electrical power to the ship and then run its motors and so forth. This was the first experiment with that and uh, he could have done it but the problem was it was funded by John Jacob Astor and Astor was wanting to know if we transmit power out into the world for everyone to use how are you going to put a meter on it and so when they figured out that Tesla's design was going to allow people to get electrical power without being charged for it they pulled the plug on that but this is how far it got they actually built the building and they had this big tower here and they were going to put a big dome up here and it was going to send radio signals to Europe or all anywhere in the world and they were going to be able to power ships and anybody that had the receiver where they could actually uh, draw from the power and use it to run circuitry motors or whatever but uh, when they found out that you know people could just hijack the power and not pay for it they uh, ended his funding, which upset Tesla terribly, uh, but he didn't have much choice in that. Let's take a look at how that would work. Here's a, here's a section of the surface of the earth. And let's say that we put our little transmitting tower here, and then he would send out a very low frequency signal. And it would also be tied into the ground. And so that would induce a sine wave charge. And it depends on the Earth being able to have a charged ionosphere or being a charged particle in space or a body in space. And so here's this signal, a low frequency signal running through the atmosphere. At the same time, an inverse signal is induced below. And let's say I put a ship here. And this ship has a receiver and then it's tied to the ground. That would induce a voltage between here and here that could be drawn on to do work. Now that was an amazing thing. I mean, you can still transmit power. He demonstrated you could transmit power. But I don't really know how that would have affected the ionosphere or the atmosphere or other things other than this receiver if that was working. I could see damage to the ionosphere and that would have consequences like we're having today with the, uh, the depletion of the ionosphere through other things being put in the atmosphere. So that might have saved a lot of trouble, but it's an interesting thought nonetheless. This was also a uh, radio transmitting tower. He was planning on building an equivalent one in Scotland that would send signals between the United States and Scotland. But he sort of lost favor when, no, when he couldn't demonstrate a uh, monetary a way of making money from this system. Okay? Here's another picture of, um, Ed, of Tesla. And what he is demonstrating here is wireless power transfer. He's holding two fluorescent tubes and he has a power wires up here containing a high voltage and he would hold those tubes in space and illuminate them and that would show that you could actually 
uh, he's standing right here and he's holding these and you can actually see them lighting up or that's what they were doing and people could see the demonstration of how this power between these two plates would illuminate those bulbs. Now this is one of the more interesting things that Tesla made and um, it's called a Teleforce. Has anyone ever heard of a Teleforce gun? Tesla invented it back in 19, um, I think 1914, 1915, and it was designed to be a weapon. It was a particle beam weapon. And what it did, it would uh, take um, tungsten uh, metal and it would cause that to break up under intense electrical pressure and make a beam of tungsten particles that would shoot out extremely fast and anything in their way would be damaged. And um, not many people talk about this, but uh, it would travel at 48 times the speed of sound. And so here's a uh, compressed air coming in that has tungsten particles in it. That goes into here. Here's an electrical charge generated at this point. It causes the tungsten to interact with the charge at this point and it causes a static pressure, static electrical pressure that would force the beam or particles out that end. And uh, if you take anything that's a particle and you move it at 48 times the speed of sound and it hits something, it's going to damage it. And now we're getting up to Lee DeForest. Lee DeForest was the inventor of the triode tube. And the triode tube allowed us to amplify. Before that, we had the diode tube, which allowed us to turn AC into DC. He inserted a device called a grid between the heater and the cathode of the tube that would allow uh, control of the volume of electron flow. What that means is I have a way of amplifying. Once I do that, I can make all sorts of devices. If I have a tube, I have a anode and a cathode and a grid. I have a heater here. And I have an evacuated glass envelope. Electrons will flow from here to there if there's a high positive voltage here and a negative voltage here. And I put this grid in here and that allows me to change the flow. So what that does is if I have a little signal on the grid, I can control a large amount of electron flow between here and here. And that will allow us to take a very small signal and turn it into a large signal. And that's what the audion was or the triode tube. And um, he, in 1960, he made the first experimental radio station called 2XG in New York City. And it, um, broadcast the first radio advertisements, which was mainly for his radio system if you wanted to buy it. And then the uh, presidential election. So the first presidential election ever broadcast was in 1916.